Hello. You're listening to Jonesy's Jukebox on KLOS. That was the Stooges, I Want to Be Your Dog. And before that was Foxygen, The Thing Is. That's the name of the song. It's from their new album, Seeing Other People. Very good. And uh, it is it is eight minutes after 12 bells on a Tuesday. And it's uh, nice weather out, nice and cool. I've been running around all morning. And now I'm here with my pals, Susan Holmes, with her old man, Duff. Hi, Steve. How Hi, are you? How so are good you? to see you. Yeah. Looking good. Thank you. So are you. Thank you. I love your T-shirt. You do. And I love Duff's, good, too. Good, right? Promoting. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, we got Steve, Steve, I wore this in a lot of pictures in London <laughs> last weekend. You did. Yeah. You yeah, wore it well. You, was you playing there with your, with your new... Uh, no, Sue and I went out uh, Thursday or whatever. We landed Thursday at eleven fifteen. I did press for that record. Yeah, for, and she did press for her book. Yeah, uh, we were there for seventy-two hours. Wow. I think I did about sixty interviews. Wow. Yeah, and a couple of photo shoots. Where I wore your shirt. Oh, so Paris sweet. Paris match. It was darling. madness. So sweet. Wear it well, yeah. darling. Do you like traveling? Uh, yeah, I do. I Europe, I mean, like that. I, well, I guess you London. wasn't there long enough to get the jet lag because you mm. was... Kind of. We weren't... Yeah, we, we just got there and worked. Yeah. Slept when we could. Mm. Uh, but yeah, we like traveling together. We we, I mean, travel a lot, obviously, on, on this last two and a half years on yeah. the Guns Tour. Yeah. 152 shows, 49 countries, something like that in three years. That's was, crazy. Yeah, it was a lot. But it was cool. Yeah. It was great. Our kids are grown now, Steve. Shows, of course. I just got a call from uh, Grace yesterday. Yeah? She wants me to do a cameo. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, uh, in she wants me to be like one of them... Talk show. ...guys people. introducing them, yeah. Yeah, I she said it. before I left, she goes, just tell Steve it's like 15 minutes. 15 yeah, no, minutes. I, I, I'm down, but Grace, if you're listening, can you do it at 3 o'clock, not 7 o'clock? Because I've got to do something at 7 o'clock. Do you think she's listening? We'll see. I think so. She, well, she listens text every day. Us if you Text us if you're listening. Okay, right. And It'll be you, a rad Pink Slips video, though. Yeah. Jonesy's appearing in it. Who's, do, <laughs> who's doing it? Um, I don't know. Uh, Gosh, I don't you know. They're I all, they're all like 21 they're so and, and they're killers. <laughs> you know? Videos and new tracks and songs and playing shows. They're opening for Killing Joke coming up. Yeah. That'll be really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they, they find, you know, all the directors or whatever now are like these 20, 21 year old kids who are brilliant. The guy who yeah. did her last stop motion, whatever the video. The dolls, the dolls. Oh, so yeah, that Lucas David. David kid, you know? Yeah. Um, so there's a whole new generation of, so I don't know who, who the hell's doing it. Yeah. To, to answer your question. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's, it's okay because they're young to us, but when we were 21, we knew everyone, you felt like you knew what you were doing. Yeah. We're hmm. just older, and we don't get it, what young people do. I don't get it. Yeah. I think Sue and I get a, a little view. Because you're in, around. We get a view into it, yeah. you know, and uh, by, by just by osmosis, get to, like, some of the hip new bands and whatnot. Yeah. True. Yeah. I've been playing a single. It's good. Grace. Well, I, I guarantee Sweet you we're going to be playing it today, I'm sure. Hmm. You must. So, I insist. <laughs> so, Susan. Yes, You've love. got a book. Mm, the Velvet Rose. The Velvet Rose. And uh, it took you nine years. That's correct. To do this. And Very you did, long time. And you did it all <laughs> yourself. Yes. I mean, I had a great team, certainly. Duff, always inspiring me. Such a great, you know, inspiration and writer himself. And I loved your book. enjoyed your everything, you, you know, your story that you told. And um, I just thought I had a, you know, interesting uh story to tell. My book's fiction. It's a novel, but it is a little bit of a Romana Clef. Um, it takes place in the early 90s and has a lead female protagonist, Scarlet, and it just kind of takes you on all her adventures and various fashion capitals like we were just talking about in London and New York and LA. And, and then she meets this guy, Johnny, at the rock band The Westies, and there's actually music, uh, limited seven-inch vinyl. Yeah, we're going to play some of that. Uh, stemming from the book, sort of like um, Stillwater from Almost Famous. Yeah, I think that had 
um, some yeah. of the Heart Girls, Nancy Wilson and um, Pearl Jam. Yeah. So it's it's like really exciting because I know that all the rock and roller fans will really dig it. Yeah. Is there any pictures in it? No, because it is a, it is a straightforward it's a, it's a novel. novel. Yes, it's a you know it's a oh, novel. novels don't have pictures. <laughs> oh, they don't. I don't know because I don't read books. Pictures in your head, I guess. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's like cheating if you put pictures in a novel. That's like two bob. I mean, it would be a little too. Maybe drawings would be a thing. Draw, drawings. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you could have that. Yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> but when Susan said that she, um, she had a team, I mean, she really wrote this book on her on her own. I had nothing to do with it. Besides, I was writing stuff at the same time. Um, she, I saw her work. I'm super proud of her. I saw her work so hard on this book. Uh, so many diff- going through so many different incarnations of the book. Uh, and I don't know. She she um, she did this really on her own. And uh, when I finally got the first three chapters to read, you know, after all of this time, and she gave me the first three chapters, uh, I was really, really blown away. I read a lot. Yeah. And so does she. Like she said, she, she read your book. She yeah. reads a lot. So yeah. she has to kind of, that was keeping her benchmark up high. I don't want to speak for her, so I'll stop now. Have you uh, thought of doing uh, the audio for it? Oh, yeah. Um, actually, there is an Audible book coming out, I believe, June 1st. And Are you doing the voice? Well, I did audition for it, and then I sent it in, and they were the the uh, audio publishers were very impressed, apparently, with my Italian accent. But um, they then decided to go ahead and proceed with... Um, a narrator who's won all these awards and recently did Gloria Steinem's book and she's apparently one of the best of the best so leave it to the professionals yeah but it is on audible and it wasn't a bidding war it was really exciting yeah I'm just thrilled that it's coming out on audio because I I guess that is a huge market now too (laughs) yeah is it a kind of book where young ladies are gonna relate Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah, because um, the characters in the book are in their young 20s, and it's a coming-of-age story. So I think it'll resonate, you know, with people kind of our age group to, you know, younger kids trying to figure out their stuff. And it just kind of demonstrates, you know, all the scandal and drama and ups and downs that kind of follow um, these characters on their journey and trying to figure out this unconventional career path. You know, whether yeah. you're a musician and you're in the rock and roll world or the fashion world, um, just for anyone who's kind of had the courage to champion that yeah. and not kind of follow that conventional nine to five yeah. path. Have, have both your uh, daughters read it yet? Well, they're in the midst of reading it because it just came out. Um, it literally was published, gosh, just over a week ago and it's already, sold out at Amazon and Barnes and & Noble and they've had to restock it. So really? Yeah, I, I really ordered it on that. Amazon because that's what you do for good luck, right? You, you order, I ordered my own records or, yeah. and for in her case, her book. And the day it came out, we're in New York. She's doing the Strand Bookstore, which is a big thing. Yeah. You've done it before. Yeah. And I get this notice from Amazon, like, we can't fulfill this order. Do you want to cancel it? It's, it's, we're out of stock. So yeah. first day, so I... <clears throat> Without letting her know, because it's a big day for her not to freak yeah. out. I called her book company and said, you better get more to Amazon now. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, sales are, are booming. I worked hard on the pre-press of it, <clears throat> too. You know how that is yeah. when you're out in your book. Yeah. Book, uh, you know, you're in writing mode, and you're completely isolated and working tremendously hard on that. And I write for the Huffington Post and did that for four years and other, um, you know, blogs and magazines and then all of a sudden one day it, it finally comes to fruition and your book is indeed out and then you you know you go from being a writer to a marketer so yeah. I'm learning a lot in this process yeah. it's really exciting and fun yeah. but it's tough and challenging too yeah you know it's done now though <sighs> now you just gotta let it happen yeah you know that's it yeah and i'm enjoying the book tour like um, you know, the Strand in New York was exciting. We did Seattle, Elliott Bay, and tonight's Book Soup at 7 o'clock. And that's going to be a lot of fun being in L.A. Um, yeah, with all of our tonight, music friends book and soup. modeling friends there. 7 o'clock. Tonight, Book Soup, 7 o'clock. I'm going to be her moderator. 
Yes, yeah. thank you, babe. You know what? <laughs> so I get to ask some questions because it'll be in public place. Yeah. Like, we've been married for a long time. We've been together since 1996. Well, yeah. You were there when we first were, were starting to date, in fact, with Neurotic Outsiders, Steve. Is that when it was? I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah, 96. Can you believe that? We what? came back from that U.S. tour we did. We played out in, like, Baltimore and New York, Irving Plaza. We played Detroit. Oh, yeah. And the guy mm -hmm. in Detroit who did the interview was a friend of her family's. And I'd done interviews with him before. And For he set Thrasher us up on Magazine. This sort of blind date. <laughs> so, uh, so, so we came back from that tour and she picked me up from Burbank Airport. We, our last gig was Phoenix on that tour. Yeah. And flew back into Burbank and she picked me up. Oh, look at that. So you're oh. my extra good luck charm with this See? whole thing. Thank but you. as a moderator tonight, yes. like, you know, yeah. in a relationship, there's certain <laughs> things you just don't ask. <laughs> There's, yeah, <laughs> there's certain things you don't ask. So maybe tonight in front of an audience, I can ask her things Ooh. Ooh. about that. Get so tell me, not, tell, mm. for the audience, yeah, can we know Do like in the, the modeling years, and what kind of creeps were around? <laughs> maybe, I'll, maybe I'll ask questions oh, like God. that. Oh, I'm sure there was a many creeps. Oh yeah, right. I write about it in the book a bit too. It's funny. Yeah, I mean it's changed so much the industry. It's a different world, you know, with social media and Twitter and Instagram. I don't think people can get away with as much stuff. So I guess for our daughter's generation, for Grace and May, it's probably a little bit actually better and safer because, you know, if there's some just creepy guy on the prowl or something, well, they, they, they'll, they, like, tweet about it and be like, this guy's bad or something. Well, you the know? thing now, you've got all them Instagram photographers who, yeah. who want to take pictures, you know, so true it's not real pro like you're doing right. something for a magazine or even though some yeah. of them are legit i'm not saying all of sure. it it's just a different dynamic it is and um, now they even in the advertising world i've heard in modeling they'll say okay now make it look as though it was just something you posted on instagram and they're paying millions of dollars to make it look like holding some stupid yeah. drink <laughs> that's that you would never drink stick or whatever i guess yeah it's or funny this new it, lotion it holding it yeah. Make yeah. it look natural. Right. Just hold it up <laughs> exactly. like that. <laughs> <laughs> Casually, you know. They but, want you to make it look like it's an Instagram I photo? Guess that's, I've heard. I haven't done any of those shoots, but um, wow. I've heard, you know, from various people in the industry. Yeah. And whatnot. What but, are you going to do? Yeah, I don't know. It's always changing. I guess it's good, but. Book yeah. soup is kind of small. Yeah. No. Maybe it's going to be a frenzy down there. Well, yeah, so they do it. I mean, we, so get there early, everyone. She did the strand. <laughs> get your it's copy a lot of smaller. Velvet Rose. You know, book soup. <laughs> yeah, I know. There's my it, little plug. <laughs> have you been down there yet? Well, we went to see a guy speak at the beginning of December yeah. for his novel, Lake City, of yeah. uh, this suburb in Seattle. And it was small. And uh, I was eyeballing the place for Susan's book thing yeah. then. And uh, I remember doing one there, and I just kind of. I just stood up, like people came were around the corner, yeah. and I just stood up and started talking, and then, uh, so I, they don't have a room there, do they? Not really, but they make it, they make one part of it, they put chairs up, what, what they, well, yeah, right. I've seen that, that's what they do, I don't know what they're doing tonight, but I did a, I did a book thing there. How did your thing go? And it was crazy, there was like a line down a yeah. bleeding road. Oh my God. Right. And, uh, I mean, I'm not surprised. I didn't do a thing though. I just signed. No. I just signed books. I didn't. Oh, okay. I didn't do any. Uh, you know, like presentation. Q &A or yeah. Discussion. Yeah. Book soup. You better make room if you're listening. Yeah, because I'm big. <laughs> Cause Steve well, there's Jones. only one Steve Jones. That's the it. The pontiff. <laughs> only one big Jones. You come in the back. Door, but you are yeah. in my book. I'm do you want me to read the you the sentence <laughs> of you in the yeah. book? Yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <coughs> Can I read you the sentence of you? In the oh, book? please do. Yeah. Is that okay? Oh, May? Make sure you're oh. nice and loud. Okay. okay. Is that all right? Okay. This kind of drops you in, so I don't expect anyone to understand what's going on here, but it's just too fabulous not to mention. It says, This is this girl, Scarlett, and, and uh, she's heading out to the club, to the Viper Room. Again, it's, you know, the 90s, and she's just trying to get to this cool place in Los Angeles here. I gave my, so it goes, I gave my name to the door person and steered my way into the main bar, which was standing room only, packed to the gills with an assortment of the city's most fabulous nightlife personalities, from Steve Jones of the Sex Pistols to cool radio DJ Rodney Bingenheimer. 
So there you go. There's <laughs> there's just this little little Name tiny drop. tease snippet. What do they call it? I had to because you inspired me so much, Jonesy. Name I don't check. I don't think I ever tell you that because we, when we hang out or right, we see each other, it's always like, hey, how yeah. are you doing? What was going on today? La la la. But it was fun writing this book because I got to revisit. I mean, there's a lot of great music in it and fashion, but it it kind of also is the pop culture stuff yeah. too and like you're definitely obviously a brilliant musician but you know in that pop culture world too you know could as an this icon. be a movie hmm well i i think uh, have you got that it, in it, mind it, it, is like you're like thinking of that everyone it's, does it's definitely a movie. i mean it's like i'm can i pipe in oh yeah please because uh, i'm i'm like a hype <laughs> man for this yeah, so. yeah. yeah. i'm a hype man yeah. uh Just it's McKay definitely like almost famous reality bites with this really original flair because she took stuff from her actual modeling days and, and took stuff that she experienced in rock and roll with me kind of later on, pushed it all together. There's no stories that she actually took from one person. You know, there's not, you wouldn't recognize one character yeah. in here. It's like, oh, yeah. that's so-and-so. Yeah. I, I do think Shiv, who's this guy who comes into the band, the Westies, um, he's a, a legendary guy. Uh oh. That's our gate. B breaking Sorry. news. Maybe it's. <laughs> they know we're in the radio. They're breaking in. I'm oh, just... yeah. Oh, look at that. <laughs> what is it? It's Sorry. our front door. Oh, the postman gate. Yeah. You know yeah. how they, they show you. I know. When they ring your. I bell. know. So, anyone thinking out there? Yeah. Right? We got this. We're not on the radio. <laughs> we see you. There's a we're gang. Dove cells. There's a gang in my this house. <laughs> we're doing <laughs> this show from Dove cells. <laughs> yeah. Um, but there's a, there's a guy, Chev, that comes into the band, the Westies, which is the. the fictional band in the book, yeah. The Velvet Rose, uh, who kind of save rock and roll. And Shiv comes in and, and makes the band that much better. He's he's a seasoned guy. And to me, he is like the Steve Jones that yeah. I met during Neurotic Outsiders. Yeah. Kind of saved my ass. I didn't I didn't know if I could play music sober. And you you came in and said, you want to do a show, and a, a gig, man. And I... I didn't know if I could play sober. I, yeah. I was sitting at my house riding mountain bikes and, and yeah. going to the dojo, you know. Yeah. And you, you looked at me and said, you can do it, man. And you were Steve Jones. To me, you were Steve Jones, like the guy I learned how to play guitar from. So I think Shiv is is that guy to Johnny, the leader of the Westies. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is a thing. It is a thing. I did uh, When I first got sober 32 years ago, I'm like, I can never get on a stage without at least a beer. Right. And right. the, the fact of actually doing it with nothing is, to me, back then was mind boggling. Mm. Yeah. And it's not only the show, it's after the show. Mm. Right. When you want to come down, that's when you really start getting itchy yeah. for me. Anyway. Yeah. Well, that brings in. You're listening to Jonesy's Jukebox on KLOS. That was the Neurotic Outsiders a track called Good News. And my man Duff on vocals. That album came out in 1996 or seven. Six. On Maverick Records. That song makes me want to break stuff still. It's still rocking. Yeah. It's a good production. That solo, Steve. Oh, the solo. I air soloed. In, oh, man. Studio here. Oh, jeez. I know every note. Every goddamn note. Oh, uh, Jerry Harris Harrison produced yeah. that from the Talking Heads, which seemed like a weird thing, but he, he did it. Do you think he put any good input in he had that really good engineer guy too yeah get his name yeah. uh was it quinn martin quinn martin i think it was yeah. yeah um i mean those songs were were done i think it was that was maverick really wanted us to get a producer producer and yeah. and he had just had a what hit like weezer record right did he yeah i like him i like jim i like him too i mean just the, the history of that guy modern lovers and all that stuff yeah. right yeah um talking heads Went up to a Sausalito. Yeah, that that went to go to the record plant in Sausalito. Yeah. That was a that was a lot of fun. Staying at that hotel right on the water. Yeah, <laughs> so strange. <laughs> um, but we didn't do it all there, did we? I think we another? did. No, N NRG. Oh, did we do do drums and bass at NRG? Maybe a place in the valley, right? Yeah. Is it still there? That gaff? I don't know. Yeah, NRG's there. Yeah. Yeah, the idea of going up there, I don't know. Well, like, what, get them away from the city? I mean, we weren't doing drugs or anything. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't keep me away from the city at night. Right. Oh, it didn't. Huh? Afterwards. No, I used to take my little excursions up there. What was that place I used to go to? 
the Mitchell brothers, uh, the, the Pharrell, yeah. Pharrell Theater. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, man. What a place that was. What was that all about? Oh. Oh, you don't want to know. Maybe I do. She kind of, <laughs> nah, she kind of would. <laughs> I'm yeah. intrigued. It Anything was, it that was, you do, Jonesy. It was dodgy. Do tell. It was kind of a strip club slash mm. booths oh. slash pay a little extra slash. Well, the strip clubs are a little different in Northern California. Probably a little more kitschier. And this was a famous fun, right? place. Like the two <laughs> brothers, okay. one of them got killed. Yeah, one killed the other one. Oh, I yeah. Think. Wow. There was, there was Scandal, some, intrigue, drama. Yeah. Ooh. I don't even know if it still exists. Oh. But there I, was a lot of like shows with with. Uh, you, remember, you'd walk in that place, yeah. and it was dark, right? Yeah. Just that front foyer, yeah. And there, there would be like um, glow in the dark. Can I say the word? F- women's plaything. Like, oh, oh, oh yeah. devices. Can I say? <laughs> no. Dildos. 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 And you'd see them going in and out. It was like the strangest thing. There'd be girls there doing that. Oh, in this really? dark, darkened room. Uh, uh, well, that's very creative. It, it, no, in and out. Oh, don't say don't in and out. Don't say in and out. You can say Dee Dee, but you can't. Mm. No. Anyhow, it was a strange, strange place. <laughs> <laughs> it was really strange. It was. It was strange. It was kind of cool, yeah. though, in a crazy way. Like, I loved that place. Yeah. And they yeah. had a like they had a porn theater there. There was like, a porn theater. Would, why would you go and sit with a bunch of other dudes and watch a porn movie? Right? Well, I think it wasn't just about Oh, uh, was there things going oh. on there? There was things. Live oh, there was action. things. There was live things. action. What you yes. say? Live action. Yes. <laughs> yes. Exactly. I did actually. <laughs> you did. Anyway, moving Perhaps. along. Susan and I are like Amsterdam. Yeah, you know, we was, you yeah. know, if you're gonna go there, a little Amsterdam trip. Twenty five guilders nice. worth. Mm. I'll have twenty five guilders <laughs> worth. When I was like twenty one, that's what the deal was. Is that right? Twenty five guilders. What's a guilder? That was the money. The Dutch. Before they went uh, Euro. Oh, Gilders. Oh, yeah. Gilders. Oh, I forget about that. But before they before they had the uh, Euros. Euro. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I'll have 25 Gilders worth, please. Well, you, you even remember. Well, of course <laughs> it's like know. going into the butcher shop. Uh, give me a 25 Gilders worth, please. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, I told you about the butcher. Uh, Are you <laughs> why don't you tell us the joke? Uh, well, what what, what, yeah, what butcher? What joke? Kind of. uh, I went into the butcher's yet, my butcher yesterday. Yeah. And he said, Duff, I'll bet your money you can't uh, reach the meat up here on the top shelf back here in the walk in freezer. Yeah. I said, I can't do it. The stakes are too high. <laughs> I don't bump. <laughs> <laughs> so oh. silly. Duff always has so many jokes. He like always that. has Just, jokes. Yeah. He always, uh, that one's pretty Tons good, though. Of them. Yeah, and he always remembers the punchline and everything. So Timing, well. Timing's good. Timing's good. So yeah. Susan wrote this book, <laughs> yeah. right? And wrote this, The, the Velvet, Velvet Rose. Rose. I'll say the name of her book. Again. I'm her hype man. There's a yes. band that she fictionalized, a band that saved rock and roll in the mid-90s. Mid-90s was a time that, that rock and roll could, could have been saved, right? Neurotic Outsiders, we went out. And we were touring in that kind of strange, after Kurt Cobain time when like we were like the only rock and roll band kind of going around yeah mm. you know and so the westies in the book they were this this band of, you know mess ups and and i don't want to say the other yeah stuff. yeah yeah uh, i'm trying to be pl- uh, but but they had good songs and they were out and they got this audience and she wrote about the rise of this band as a parallel story to to the main protagonist which is scarlet this young girl who's who becomes a model and a designer but uh, the Westies became so real in the book that the, um, the Rare Bird, the book company, asked me if, if I had any music. They wanted to do a seven-inch vinyl. Yeah. Rare Bird is a very cool book company. They yeah, do they vinyl do and do all kinds of cool stuff. Great. Music and books. they asked me if there, I had anything by chance from the, from the 90s that they could put out a seven-inch with. And I, I just got masters back from all this music I did in the 90s. And uh, there was indeed a song. We won't say how you got it back, right? We won't say how I got it back. <laughs> That's confidential. Guns, anyways. guns, knives. Uh, <laughs> That's a whole other story. Some cave searchers. <laughs> but, uh, uh, headlamps. <laughs> uh, jumpsuits. M80s. And uh, there was, uh, Harley Davidson's. Harley Davidson's. Flashlights. Pole, pole vaults. It, a lot of stuff involved in getting those masters Bombs. back. Yeah. Just kidding. Um, but there's a seven inch single of the Westies, the actual band, which is kind of, you can compare it to Stillwater, Stillwater. In that movie almost famous in that they were brilliant players, but we didn't know maybe 
in your face that it was, uh, I think it was Nancy Wilson and some Pearl Jam people. So kind of along those lines, right? The Westies. So we're, I Savannah, think we're gonna the Velvet gonna, Rose book. I think we're gonna date world debut a yeah. Westie oh, song yeah. here. Are we gonna give a hint who might be? Mm. Or sh- hey, maybe the fan or the audience can guess. Okay. <laughs> who the I bet you they are. might be able to tell. Okay. This it is, is it this is, is a recording from from 1997. Okay. You just heard good news. Yes. Didn't you? Yes, from the new rotic outside. Some, might be some familiar. Boy. Right. I won't give it away. Well, but I might start with the, who is who is playing on this? 1997. Okay. This is the West. Is this is a track called Riding Home. We're here with Susan Holmes McKagan, S. and we're and her old man Duff McKagan. <laughs> Book soup tonight. Book seven soup two. tonight. Seven, seven bells. Games. Be there. We want to see you guys. Yeah, it's going to be, it's gonna be uh, fun. It's going to be good. Take it away, son. You're listening to Jonesy's Jukebox on Cal OS. That was The Westies. That was a track called Riding Home. And uh, we're here with Susan Holmes McKagan. Hello. And her <laughs> husband. Duff McKagan. Excuse me. Did you just let one out? Oh, that's the chair. That's yeah, the yeah. chair. Silly. Know, these, <laughs> these chairs are terrible. Here. Um, you, if you if you fancied that last track, it's a limited seven-inch single from the fictional band The Westies, included with the online bundles of Velvet Rose, a rarebirdbook.com. Very good. I mm. noticed some playings on that. Did you on that track? I'm not saying no. Hmm. I definitely know. Are people going to email in, or what do they do? Call in? What do they? Do? Can text us. See yeah. if you I think can guess who's playing guess. on that. Yeah. 1997. Yeah. Or six. Yeah. We we should give them a a book and a vinyl if someone can figure it out. <laughs> the the complete about. band. Yeah. There's four people playing on it, right? Three. There's three, three people. Okay, so there's a bass player, there's a drummer, and there's a guitar player. Right. Correct. And then there's a singer. The singer might be playing one of the instruments. He, he, well, I would imagine he is, unless you got... Unless it's just one of the singer guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you call up and you tell Texas 1-800-955-KALOS... If you uh, can figure out who, who the band was in that, you'll get a book and, and, a, vinyl, and, a, and a vinyl, two tracks, a seven-inch single. We're going to visit the Duke right now. When we come back, we're going to continue this... Uh, enlightening. Enlightening extravaganza. Thunderbolt mm. of a conversation. Yes. See you in a minute. On the next Frosty, Heidi and Frank. You're listening to Jonesy's Jukebox on KLOS. That was Duff McKagan, Don't Look Behind You, from the new album, Tenderness, out May 31st. He's playing June 13th at the El Rey, and that track, which you can get on iTunes right now, I believe. Is that what you said? I think that's correct, yes. I like that, though. Thank you, man. It's very... uh, I love all the sax and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. We got a lot of good, cool players to play on that record. And you played with us um, here when we played the yeah. station live. Um, what are you going to do when you play live? Are you, are you, who's going to play? We s- might we might pick up like sax players as we go around the yeah. country. Yeah. You know, uh, In L.A., we'll have the whole real thing. We'll have my brother's horn section and those guys playing. And maybe even the Waters singing background vocals. Yeah. Yeah, maybe some of the Westies will get up with you. Too. Maybe the Westies. Perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> st- they still, they've survived, didn't they? They did, and they saved rock and roll. There's like... I should have to get some of the Westies up. That would be badass. Huh. Bailey. Bailey. Or Jed or Hawk. Mm. Who should I get? All of them. Johnny? Get, yes. Get Quinn. Quinn. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> well, Quinn Shiv Martin. is a little nod to Jonesy, so <laughs> sure. Shiv. We are. Hmm. That lady's voice you're hearing is Susan Holmes McKagan, and she has a new book out called The Velvet Rose. And she's going to be at Book Soup tonight at 7 o'clock, mm. and Duff is going to uh, narrate. Moderate. Moderate. 
moderate yes. this. The moderator. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. We we got to do one in uh, Seattle yeah. at Elliott Bay Boat Company. It went pretty good, right, babe? Went it's good. A hit. She, she's done. Um, I'm I'm her again. I'm I'm her hype man here, and yeah. and her uh, West Coast publicist. Well, Seattle publicist. Seattle publicist. Yeah. Um, yes. But the book show, uh, or the book th- event at Elliott Bay Books in Seattle is great. Her event at Strand with Miss J Alexander. Alexander as her moderator was mm-hmm. off the chisel. Yeah. Oh yeah, that she was missed. other level. That was. That was uh, <laughs> what was king and queen, right? <laughs> I would say Miss J is the yeah. queen of. It was amazing. And it pop was, culture, fashion, music, rock and roll. But they've been it's packed, fun. and they've been yeah. really nice, fun events. And uh, tonight's will be no storytelling. Different. Yeah, <laughs> what we I'm going to ask you for some stories and how it relates to your your fictionalized book. Oh, I'm going to have some actually questions you don't know what I'm going to ask you about tonight. Maybe I want to get some information for myself. Hmm. You can <laughs> Those little things you don't talk about from yeah. the past. Just oh. put me right there in the spot. This, of could, this could be the end of the Harms family. Or you can read family. the Golden Rose book and find out a few no, I want to know. morsels, this could, too. This could be the end of McKagan. Hmm. Nah. No, it'll be fun. No Thanks, tea. baby. We like naughty stuff. For, 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 for being my moderator. We love. My not, naughtier right We like naughtiness, though. <laughs> I hope our daughters are not listening now. Naughty no. question. <laughs> we're going to visit the Duke. When we come back, we're going to have some more naughty question. <laughs> we're here with Susan Holmes McKagan and Duff McKagan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're listening to Jonesy's Jukebox in KLOS. How are you? That was a Lou Reed Satellite of Love from the album Transformer. It's a fantastic album. Fantastic. I really enjoyed Wonderful. it. Wonderful. I'm here with my guests, uh, Duff McKagan and Susan Holmes McKagan, with a new book, The Velvet Rose. She's going to be doing a thing tonight at the Book Soup. And, uh, Old man is going to be the narrator. The uh, wrong word? Moderator. Moderator, sorry, excuse me. Must be my American accent. (laughs) (laughs) Uh. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Um, You played uh, Sweet Talker earlier, didn't you? Little pink slips in there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did play that, and I forgot to backtrack it. And uh, it's all good stuff. I like it. I love it, actually. It's like a McKagan playlist. It's a McKagan mm. world today. It yes. is. <laughs> McKagan, Jonesy, Westies. Yeah. Pink Slipsy. Did we want to end? Uh, we we're not touching that one, right? Someone okay. someone oh. won the thing. Someone guessed. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Did they? We which can, is, we which can is send them a, a, a book and a, and a and single. And a vinyl. Yeah. And a vinyl. But so you know, your name is what is his name? Get it while it's Doesn't hot. matter. You know right what now. the thing is? It does matter. But the, we're the thing leaving is, it alone. People just Google mm. and they find out anything. That's not fair. The Oracle. It's not it fair. Be. And you yeah. know why it's not fair? You know when I whistle a song? Yeah. And you have to guess what I'm whistling? You can't Google that. Or that was the whole. It? Or you put up Shazam. <laughs> that, they can't, that won't, that won't that, tell you. No. Yeah. It goes by. The lyrics, I think, the singing part, not the whist- I mean, Shazam? not the melody. Or no, the it's, it's something Shazam more than that. Algorithms, man. Algorithms. Yeah. It's a catchphrase, man. Elon Algorithms. Musk. <laughs> Algorithms. <laughs> <Yeah>. Quinn. <laughs> uh, um, do you think it's the end? Listen to Jonesy's do, jukebox. Do, 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 to find do, it all out. Do you here. think that? Um, I mean, I don't even understand half of technology. I a don't young either. Pe- are young people just like walking all over us at this point? Hmm. Is that why young people look at you like? I can see their minds <laughs> thinking. Whenever you get something of a young person, they're looking at you like that stupid bastard. Yeah, with him. <laughs> I do. Just from us, you know, being around all these young kids, I think especially the younger, the eighteen-year-old, even I mean, great age too. But they're just maybe five steps ahead of us. Yeah, hmm. and they're just waiting their turn. Yeah, 
They're looking how buffoon, how <laughs> buffoonish we've been. Sneaking pictures of us and yeah. putting funny captions on their stories but, unbeknownst to us. But even on a larger scale, yeah. I just yeah. think uh, they're like, okay, yeah, all right, all you buffoons, yeah, are you getting old, old fucks. Yeah, we're we're well. about to vote. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It is crazy. I mean, it was crazy when I was when I was writing the book in the '90s. Like, that's actually when the the internet came out publicly it's crazy to think that it doesn't seem like it was well, that is, long ago but it was like in 93 or yeah. something it came no it's out. not that long ago and because it's not that long ago because of what's happened technology things have just gone flying ahead yeah, yeah. And people 30 years old and older don't know how to be on social media yeah you know yeah, and I think the well, younger. Speak for yourself. I enjoy. <laughs> well, I mean, You're my wife does. I get into it. I call it few. scrapbooking. I, 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 it's my creative outlet. I like. I, I, like I, I have a laugh fun. with it too. I get to keep up with all your fun, st- you know, all yeah. your Instagram posts and stuff. Yeah, but you guys They're are doing so cool. F- fun things. You know what I'm talking about. I know. I'm not taking pictures of food. No. no. And I don't have a bleeding cat in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, that does get old when someone's like, mmm, pancakes, gets, and then, you know, okay. What annoys me, though. Don't do that. I don't know if you do this. I, yeah. hope. I don't think you do. But when it's just a selfie of your face every day. Oh, God. Just a yeah. selfie of that miserable That's, face. Yeah. <laughs> it's just never a good look, is it? It's just that they're good looking birds no. or whoever it is, but it's just a miserable mm. face. And it's always the same Doing nothing. look, same pose. Same thing. We've seen it a hundred times. Yeah. Yeah, change well, it up the, a little. The duck. Look, <laughs> it, it's not even a duck look. That's it, like, that's like trying too hard a duck mm. look. Now it's just like a miserable sour. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> Listen to us. <laughs> Resentful <hilarious>. old farts <laughs> on, the- <laughs> on my Instagram. I really I follow Susan, my girls, my band Aww. slash Jonesy, uh, the guys in my Pink band. Slips. You, yeah. Steve Jones, yeah. uh, Linda Ramon, yeah. Shooter Jennings, Shooter Jennings. I mean, that's about it. Just like yeah. my immediate friends. I don't go out yeah. there. So you're lucky. Oh, and your sports too. You you like to follow some sports stuff. Go you Packers. Yeah. You see Hawks. See Hawks. Yep. Go Hawks. Go Hawks. So tonight, Go Mariners. Book soup. Yeah, book Susan soup. Susan will be uh, talking about her book, The si- Velvet Rose. Signing mm-hmm. books. Signing yeah, books. signing books. We'll be in discussion. Duff is moderating. You guys. It's just fun because I've gotten to do some already. Book it's soup. fun to get to meet and talk. To people and just I don't know Sunset book, Boulevard. Yeah, book soup so cool. Oh, what where a beautiful Tower store. Record used to be. You guys right, should play yeah. uh, Mark Lanigan's new song "Stitch It Up." It's real good, real good, brand but, new song. Duff, Susan, thanks for coming. Bye. Thanks for having I, us. I hope you had a good time. You had a blast. Thank you. We're gonna play um, Lou Reed right now. This is a track called "Heroin." Nice, happy song. <laughs> it's off the album. Uh, <laughs> Rock and roll animal. It's a beautiful arrangement. It really though. is. Yeah. Mm. It's so beautiful, regardless of the lyrics, the music. Even the lyrics are great. It's just they a, really a are. true song. Mm. Yeah, and uh, it's awesome. It's and a uh, truth teller, right there. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna probably see you tonight. All right. Ooh, I can't Steve wait. Jones is gonna be wow. there. Yeah, Los Angeles. I love that. Yeah. We're okay, gonna... you you heard it here, everyone. So I'm gonna it. see you at seven. All right. Book soup. See you in a minute. See you next Tuesday.